The Swerve, How the World Became Modern UK title, The Swerve, How the Renaissance Began is a book by Stephen Greenblatt and winner of the 2012 Pulitzer Prize for General Nonfiction and 2011 National Book Award for Nonfiction. Greenblatt tells the story of how Poggio Bracciolini, a 15th-century papal emissary and obsessive book hunter, saved the last copy of the Roman poet Lucretia on the nature of things from near terminal neglect in a German monastery, thus reintroducing important ideas that sparked the modern age. The title and the subtitle of the book are explained in the author's preface. The Swerve refers to a key conception in the ancient atomistic theories according to which atoms moving through the void are subject to Kleinemann, while falling straight through the void, they are sometimes subject to a slight, unpredictable swerve. Greenblatt uses it to describe the history of Lucretius' own book. The reappearance of his poem was such a swerve, an unforeseen deviation from the direct trajectory—in this case, toward oblivion—on which that poem and its philosophy seemed to be traveling. The recovery of the ancient text is seen as its rebirth, i.e. a renaissance. Greenblatt's claim is that it was a key moment in a larger story, of how the world swerved in a new direction. Reception The book attracted considerable critical attention, some positive and some negative. In addition to winning both the Pulitzer Prize and National Book Award, it also won the Modern Language Association James Russell Lowell Prize. Publishers Weekly called it a gloriously learned page turner, and Newsweek called it mesmerizing and richly entertaining. Maureen Corrigan, in her review for NPR, said that the Swerve is one of those brilliant works of nonfiction that's so jam-packed with ideas and stories it literally boggles the mind. It was included in the 2011 year-end lists of Publishers Weekly, The New York Times, Kirkus Reviews, NPR, The Chicago Tribune, Bloomberg, SF Gate, The American Library Association, and The Globe and Mail. Writing in The New Republic, David Quint saw the book as situated in a controversial tradition that views the Renaissance as a victory of reason over medieval religiosity following John Addington Simmons, Voltaire and David Hume. Theologian R. R. Reno harshly criticized the book for "...blustering again and again about the beauty-loathing, eros denying evils of Christianity." sighing in the usual postmodern way about pleasure and desire. Historian John Monfazani credited the book with grace and learning," but found Greenblatt's Voltairean and Burkhartian interpretation of De Rerum Natura and the Renaissance, "...eccentric," "...questionable," and "...unwarranted." Greenblatt responded to this critique by reiterating his view of the importance of the Renaissance in history. Several other reviewers criticized Greenblatt's lack of historical rigor and depth while acknowledging some praiseworthy elements. In the Los Angeles Review of Books Jim Hinch saw within the book, two books, one deserving of an award, the other not. He described the first book as an engaging and wonderful exploration of the Renaissance rediscovery of De Rerum Natura, while describing the second book as a far less deserving anti-religious polemic. Michael Durda, of the Washington Post, wrote that 
by no means a bad book, the swerve simply sets its intellectual bar too low, complacently relying on commonplaces in its historical sections and never engaging in an imaginative or idiosyncratic way. Disappointed with the book's simplistic and cliched conclusions, he nonetheless saw Greenblatt's excellent notes and bibliography as a reliable reference for those seeking a more in-depth and serious treatment. Laura Setveit Miles, of the University of Bergen, criticized the book in explicitly ethical terms, writing that its scholarly and historiographical failings represent an abuse of power that precipitate the decline of the humanities by lending scholarly authority to the dire trend of truthy non-fiction books that present one theory to explain everything. She argues that the book is an injustice to the past and the mythical invention of modernity is an ethical issue, because it sets a precedent for history that ignores complexity in favor of oversimplification. William Caffaro of Vanderbilt University found the swerve, an engaging portrait of the Renaissance sense of wonder and discovery, but was disquieted by the Firm distinction Greenblatt makes between the Renaissance and the Middle Ages, and the lack of reference to current scholarship. Nevertheless, he concedes that if Greenblatt leaves us with more questions than answers, it is ultimately not a grave flaw. <laughs> <laughs> 